What we have here today is a 52 inch Moss 1200 all season fan. This fan here is manufactured back in 1983 by TAT. Fan is three speed electrically reversible, antique brass finish paired with a set of oak blades with stencil, pointed tip. Blades are reversible to plain oak on top. Around 11 degree blade pitch. Coming on top, we got a standard moss style canopy. It's a double claw mount. Six inch down rod. Here's the fan's information tag there on the top, if you can see it. Probably pretty hard to see it because of the sheen to it. But yeah, you're probably already seeing some characteristics on this fan that you don't typically see on ceiling fans. And this is definitely not your average ceiling fan. This is a heater ceiling fan, hence the name all season fan. Heater ceiling fans were a gimmick that was introduced in the 80s. And I believe Moss only offered one, Wonder, you know, made by Tat. And Firebird also made one for either Supreme or a brand called South Pacific. And then in the 2000s, they were rebooted under the Ry Riker also made one as a reboot of the concept. But largely they failed because of the biggest issue with these is that why they never became so popular is because these things are power hogs. This uses a 1200 watt heater at its maximum potential, which draws 10 amps. The ceiling fan motor draws around one amp, so altogether, without a light, this fan draws 11 amps. Which, if you install this in a room on a, on a standard circuit that powers lights, receptacles, how typically houses are wired, it'll definitely trip the breaker or blow fuses if the house is old enough to have fuses. So yeah, this fan definitely, if you wanted to put one of these up new, you definitely wanted to use a dedicated circuit straight from the panel, 15 or 20 amp, depending on if you wanted to install a light kit on the fan as well, to properly power this fan without tripping breakers. So yeah, the heating settings have two settings. Like I said, the heater at the maximum is 1200 watt, but it also can be set to 800 watt. Within the motor housing, there are three cow rod heating elements that encircle the motor. And, you know, and I think they're rated at 400 watts apiece. So when the, 800, when the 800 watt low settings powered, it only has two of the heating elements running. But when it's flipped to 1200 watt, all three of them are powered. And basically how it works is that the heating system is designed to be used in updraft winter mode on the fan so the ceiling fan will be turning in updraft this way and you'll notice that the blade irons have cooling fins attached to the, on top of the blades and as the fans turn in that would push air up through the vents and up into the motor housing the motor in this fan is a giant cast iron 188 by 20 motor and inside and the motor has a ring attached to it with a bunch of veins it basically acts as a centrifugal blower you can see the veins moving in there as i turn the blades and basically so the air gets forced up into the motor housing and then those veins acting as a centrifugal blower will force air outward toward the sideband which as you can see is mesh so forces air through the heating elements and out to the sideband and with the fan blowing an updraft Air will be coming up to the ceiling, so air will be going out to the ceiling and then circulated around the room. The vent screens on the fan are obviously made of metal mesh instead of cloth like you typically see because fire da fire hazard. So yeah, definitely an interesting concept. And like I said, and being that they're quite the power hog is the main reason why they weren't so popular. I'm not sure exactly how effective they were, you know, as an as a concept how you know how well the thing actually heated a room but i'm sure it was made not to actually heat be the sole purpose of heating a room 
but to help the existing heating system heat the room like a space heater. So pretty wild concept. Definitely can easily see why that they didn't it didn't become a staple in fans. So for purposes of demonstration, we're just going to be demonstrating the fan itself. I do not even have the heating element hooked up. The fan has four wires coming out of the down rod on like three like you typically see. The red wire is for the heating element. There's a blue wire for a light kit. Black wire for, of course, the fan motor. And, of course, your white wire for your neutral. So, yeah. This fan is also brand new right out of the box. And, of course, I'll show you what all that looks like after I get done running the fan. And everything you see here is original except for the tassel, which I do have the original tassel still wrapped up. I just didn't feel like opening it up. And the mounting bracket was missing for whatever reason out of this out of the box. So I had to borrow one off another boss fan to hang this with. But yeah, this video is going on long enough as it is. So let's start things up. Starting on low. I'm not sure how exactly the fan is set up, especially since it has a separate feed wire for the heating element itself. If it has any kind of fail safe on it where if you accidentally hit the heating element or don't forget to turn it off, even though you turn the fan off, does it shut it off as well or if it stays on? From what I gather on the instructions that when you hit the when the heating element's powered, the fan should be running or is automatically running. So I haven't opened up the switch housing to verify whether it is wired to be fail, fail proof or not. But anyway, low speed here. It's about average. Not terrible low speed. Pretty quiet too. No hum. No, of course, no bearing noise being brand new. Pretty decent fan. And motor housing is obscenely chunky, of course. There is another model of this, or another variation of this heater fan by Moss that used a different style sideband. I believe it was later it had a louvered sideband instead of having the circular mesh stamped sideband like you see on this one. So medium here, it's got a bit of wobble to it, no big deal, but decent medium speed. And high. This fan flies. According to the manual, this fan is doing around 220 RPM. With, powered with a big ass 11 or 188 by 20 motor. And with an 11 degree blade pitch, it throws out a pretty decent sum of air. And it's decent, de decent performer. I think this thing definitely slightly outperforms the earlier CEC variation of the heirloom itself, which is basically a, this fan is a spin-off of the heirloom. I know Tad also manufactured the heirloom as well, along with this heater style fan. As it stops, we'll show you the box. And here is the box. Fan on the box looks pretty identical to the one in the box. 
Looks like this one actually uses a bell canopy though, which the stock fan images always differ from what's inside the box. World famous Moss 1200 all season fan. Two different finish options, polished brass and antique brass. Moss manufacturing. Clover, which I believe was a store. Side panel. These right here are stickers. Underneath them they say, you know, Moss 1200 heater fan. So for whatever reason they changed the name of them. I believe 1983 here was the introductory year for these heater fans. So this would definitely be the earliest variation. This side here shows the same thing, a little bit worse condition. Clover store tag. This side here. As now it says, now it says clover here, but on top it says it's from service merchandise. And the shipping label too. Service merchandise store in Nashville, Tennessee. So I'm not sure Clover and service merchandise was part of the same corporate entity or not. That I don't know. This was before my time, obviously. Warranty information there on the box. Here's the tassel that comes in the box. I just didn't feel like opening it up and putting it on the fan. A little bit of a important note there. And here is the instruction booklet. Unpacking, mounting, Preparation, assembly. Installation with the double claw pin style mounting that these have. Connections. Blade installation. And operating instructions. As you can see here, note fan is automatically on when heater is on. So I'm not sure if they wired it. So if you hit the heater switch, the fan comes on automatically. I'll, unless I hook it up and find out, I'll never know. Just a little bit of specifications 80 RPM low speed. 150 RPM medium speed and 220 RPM high speed with a 7500 CFM rating. Yeah, low setting the heater draws 6.9 amps. On high setting it draws 10 amps. 800 watt, 1200 watt. That's the BTU. Fan is pretty heavy. Gross weight is 37 pounds. Box and all. And as you can see, the motor and high speed draw is a little under an amp. So total around 11 amps, just the fan and heater itself. So definitely quite the power hole, like I mentioned earlier. Exploded view parts list. And then the same warranty information on the box. So yeah, pretty neat fan. Definitely hard to find in this day and age since these weren't really popular when they were new. So yeah, that's all I got for this one. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video on this 52 inch Moss 1200 all season fan manufactured by Tat in 1983. Stay cool. Take care. Peace.